Oscar is nuts. All right, let's uh, start in a little bit. Before uh, we start, I want to talk about what's upcoming. Uh, we really haven't promoted this. I guess we're really bad promoting. August 17th. That's our one year anniversary, guys. One year anniversary. And we're throwing a free event. Big, big event for our one year birthday. For MIC's one year birthday in Philadelphia. Saturday is going to be a free event for everybody. So everybody's allowed to come. Bring your friends, family, dog, whatever you need to bring. We actually rent a very nice space. Costs us a bunch of money. All for free, guys. We're going to cater it everything else so um make sure you attend philadelphia more information on my twitter i tweeted it last night yesterday where it's going to be and all that stuff so <coughs> excuse me that's saturday august 17th and then monday it's gonna be a real treat for you guys live trading me alex the guys a bunch of members gonna teach you live when the market opens on monday this is for lifetime and annual members so all you need to do to attend this free event on monday live trading live trading man how awesome is that right um is to sign up as a lifetime or an annual so there's no upcharge no none of this stuff we don't charge for these webinars we could i see other people charging thousands of dollars for this stuff man it's crazy <laughs> it's like pay me seven thousand dollars for a dvd and then pay me another thousand dollars the event uh, to attend this and then pay me another three thousand dollars to meet you and then uh how much for a hand job <laughs> um but anyways okay so that that takes that out of the equation there <laughs> uh i want to i want to move on to um uh, what else are we missing here alex um yeah that's it uh we have a big event which we are preparing for completely free we ran it out a huge space for the event for live trading um wi-fi all that good stuff too man it was not easy to find some of these places wanted twenty two thousand dollars twenty two fucking thousand dollars just to rent a little space um over in philadelphia so it's fucking crazy man so thanks oliver for trying to find a space that has all our needs but doesn't cost us a fucking car or a house <laughs> you can imagine 300 people they wanted twenty-two thousand dollars, dude. They wanted a uh, fucking like two or six thousand just for, uh, uh, just for a uh, a strip, an outlet strip that you can plug into your laptop for three hundred people. So it's fucking crazy. These 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 rental places. I mean, these convention centers are ridiculously expensive. Holy crap, they're expensive. But uh, we're we're doing it all free for you guys. So so make sure you go, man. I mean, this is huge. We're doing live trading. We're going to highlight a lot of the members that are new to trading, but joined within a few months and started learning and being consistent. Now, that gets me down to this. Um, I want to talk about first, before we get into the death lines, all that. It, it's it's uh, learning to trade, man. It's, it's not an easy task to start. I'm going to tell you that. It's not an easy task. It does not mean it's impossible. Nothing ever good is ever that easy if it's easy everybody would be doing it right <laughs> but it's not i mean shit if it's easy to be in the nfl or be an mma fighter at ufc everybody be doing it. but the fact that they can't and that's why when you make it it's fucking phenomenal it's phenomenal guys and we are breeding out <laughs> pro quality nfl guys over at my investing club okay um and that's because we we kind of revolutionize things by keeping things very simple Trading can be very complex. Uh, you see a lot of these guys trying to teach everybody crap that doesn't work. I mean, it's, it sounds fancy, all these fucking words, big ass multi-syllable words, but it doesn't fucking work. I, we keep things very simple. We have proven strategies. So this is how we develop this stuff, okay? So the proven strategies are based upon experience, trial and error, shit that will take you years to learn on your own. Stuff that I, I mean, you wouldn't even fucking know, dude, unless you stumble upon it by accident through losses. And that's how I, we, I discovered personally a lot of these losses transfer, uh, transform into these rules I have. So every time I take a big hit, I, I'm trying to figure out why I took a big hit. And every time I lose, I try to turn it into a winner by, by figuring out what I did wrong so that it won't happen again. Unfortunately, we're human beings and it will happen again. 
But, you know, as long as you're getting better each time and you keep your risk profile manageable, that's all it takes. So trading comes down to entries, exits, and risk management. That's all it is, man. Getting a good entry will help you go a long way because a good entry can can help a bad exit. But a bad entry, fuck, man, you're scrambling, dude. If you're if you enter badly, it's very difficult to get out because of a mental. I mean, you're fucking already down, right? And so, at that point, if you enter wrong, don't don't keep adding to a loser. If you have a bad entry, I suggest you stop out and then wait because you're already fucked up. Why adding? Why are you adding to the pain, right? And so these are the these are the trials and errors that we lost through the years, or I've lost. And so we come up with the rules like the zombie rule. And then I figured out technical analysis. And then within technical analysis, there's a ton of shit you can do. A ton of shit. All these fucking indicators, all this crap. But it comes down to my opinion. If you want to start doing like very basic, quick, but effective trading, because you can spend like 25 years and still fucking trying to learn this shit, right? But, it, but you know, I got rid of all the stuff that doesn't work for me. If it works for you, great. But I'm just teaching you the basic fundamentals that you can build upon. So this is like a, it's like building a house. You have to build the foundation right. So we are teaching you the foundation. And the bells and whistles are what? The fixtures. If you want a fucking chandelier, shit like that. That's on your own, dude. Everybody has a different style of the house. But we can all agree that the foundation of a house is very important. And that's the most important, actually, when you're building a house. Without a solid foundation, all the fucking shit, like chandeliers... Earthquake comes, you're fucking dead. You're throwing money out the window. So spend your money on a solid foundation. And then the rest are the bells and whistles that you can add on later when you have more money, when you have more experience, things like that. And a lot of these guys are teaching you stuff that doesn't doesn't apply to you. Seriously. You, I see some giant ass numbers. I see people bragging about these complex strategies, butterfly spreads, and fucking sumo shit, and fucking... Doji bars, and I mean, I'm just like, what the fuck? I mean, they just want to sound fancy, but does it help you? Can you make money off this shit? You're sitting here with a $30,000 account. You're sitting here with a $3,000 account, and they're fucking teaching you shit like, fucking, why don't you go long a stock and then hedge it with options? <laughs> I mean, fuck, dude. So what, I gotta learn options now? I gotta learn, you see what I'm saying? So, I, I try, we try to build the foundation for you. A solid foundation, and then you can build upon that. But the first step you need to do is learn the foundation. The solid foundation begins with the technical analysis. And in my opinion, this is what I use, okay? The most simplified, the most simple the technical analysis is the lines. Support, resistance, and pivot lines. So pivot lines have been my bread and butter kind of secret sauce for decades. That I look at, uh, we, we, we have videos on this, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really want to show anybody pivot lines until I guess we launched. I was like, okay, now I'm going to show everything. So a lot of people don't even know what the fuck the pivot line is. They make fun of these lines, but these are the lines that fucking the algos use. These are the lines that the floor traders use. These are the fucking lines that prop traders are fucking taught to use. Okay. So they, they're no joke. You see books written fucking by Wyckoff. Back in the 19, early 1900s, 1800s, by these guys, and they're talking about these lines, dude. And they're still effective 100 years later. Um, and so within the lines, there's a ton of lines, right? So how do you discern which line is which? And so that's why I, I, I talk about the inner lines and the outer lines. First of all, how do you determine what the fucking lines are, right? The trick for, I usually do is this. I always go back at least a year, Go to like bigcharts.com and just look up like a year or Yahoo, whatever it's charting program you use. Um, look at the year. Find where the peaks are. That in itself is a fucking outer line. So I'm trying to find the resistance, okay? When things pop up, I want to see what is the potential that the stock can go up to. And that's the resistance. I talked more about this on the last IG Live. So if you want to, if you want to learn more about this, share the last IG Live. But from there, I scale in. And that's why, you know, you can get rid of the lines. If you, you can draw like a million lines if you want. But there's only a few lines, in my opinion, that matter. And so you start to zone in from an annual, I mean a year chart, down to like a month, down to 10 days. 
whatever information you can get, right? And so within those lines, there's a very important line, which we call the death line, okay? The death line, let's talk about that. Guys, what is CODX at? CODX, so what the la- so within the family of lines, there's certain lines that once it breaches, the word breach means once it goes below that point, okay? In my opinion, that is the point of no return. It's back holder fucking city, dude. So 125. So I determine CODX 140 as, I'm eyeballing this shit, by the way. You don't need to be an exact science. These guys are like, oh, it's actually 1.41759269. Who gives a fuck? It's as long as you're in the ballpark. And that's why scaling is so important. Trading is not an exact science, guys. It's a combination of science and art. If it was exact science, you're fucking dead. You're dead. The algos take over. You're fucking dead. There is still a bunch of element of surprise that we don't know about. You know, a lot of things can skew up all this stuff. Money, supply, volume, uh, supply, demand. Who the hell knows, right? But so it's a combination. So you use science, which is technical analysis. Technical analysis, basically, it's just statistics and probability. They look at data from the past to try to form a model for the future. And that's why the, it's, a, it's a predictive a predictive science. With any predictive sciences, it's not 100%. Okay? there's So you have to apply risk management all the fucking time. Just because something is 99% does not mean you will make money 100%. There'll be that one fucking percent that will kill you. Okay? That's why you need to save your ass. Just like blackjack. Okay? I always tell people, trading is like the analogy I always use. Trading is fucking awesome. Imagine that you're sitting out, sitting out at the blackjack table, and you don't you don't need to bet. You get to see your hand first, and then you bet. So with blackjack, if I get a six, a sixteen, I'm not gonna fucking want to bet. I'm just gonna wait until I get twenties. Sometimes it'll take fucking a week for you to get a twenty hand. So it depends on how much your risk tolerance is. Maybe I'll start taking smaller bets at eighteen and nineteen. You see what I'm saying? I won't take 17. 17 is like a 50-50 hand for me. So I won't take those 50-50. I have to have a little edge. So in blackjack, I like to do the 18, 19, and 20. But the 18, I'm not going to bet as big as a 20 hand, right? So imagine you're waiting for the stock to, to come to your lines. Waiting for the stock to set up. Waiting for the blackjack hands to fucking hit 20. So I can place a big bet. But even a big bet of 20, is not, I'm not going to go all in, guys. Because why? The dealer can have 21 and you're fucked. Okay? The dealer can have 21 and you're fucked. Just think about that. Okay? So even a 20 blackjack hand is not guaranteed. That's why you always have to have risk management. And we talk about this all the time. I won't get into that. But, there, but the death line, in my opinion, is a 20 fucking hand. Okay? There's a point where it does not come back. That's because of bag holders. So, CODX ran up to like $2 and something, right? Then it starts crashing down. So, the VWAP was, what, what's a VWAP, guys? Like 150 something, 160? So, VWAP, I like to layer, the, layer it with the lines. So, I determined that 140 was the point of no return. Okay? We, we have ways of figuring out what these numbers are. We, um, and we share with people in the chat room. So, Joe actually made a video about this. So, so 167. Just because it's 166... Under VWAP does not mean that it's not going to get saved. But there is a point, a line, that is the bottom support line. That once that bottom support line breaches, everybody's fucking underwater. And I determined that was 140. And that's because of the pre-market support at, bounced off at 140 or something like that. 142 or something. So I gave a little room. I said under 140. So when 140 hit, boom. I was very secure to hold it. So now I'm still in that stock, guys. I'm still holding CODX for, for $1. If it goes back up, so be it. But, you know, I have a nice position there. Nice cushion now because I, you know, I'm shorting that thing all day. I'm recycling shares. And then when 140 hit, I, 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 tr- I, tr- I try to use all my fucking size on that. Um, so there's a couple of things I noticed about COX this morning, okay? So here's a little tip for you guys. CODX is a known pig. But just because it's a known pig doesn't mean it's going to die right away. It ran up to $2. So the guys are fucking shorting this shit in the morning, pre-market, too early. It's getting blown out of the fucking water, dude. So so do not underestimate these pigs. Okay? It's the way that... If you want to just short the pig, 
Okay, you can either do two things. You could be fucking a hero and do front side shorting. Okay, I wouldn't suggest that. But the best way, this is the 20 blackjack hand, is to wait for the fucking backside. There's a couple backsides, okay? There is a down training backside, which is under VWAP, which is the standard. Yes, it's not guaranteed. It might be an 18 hand, a 17 hand. It's definitely not a 20 hand because it could save it if it's a low float, right? A 20 hand on the backside is the death line. Okay, so I determined 140 was the point of no return. Under that, I'm able to be confident enough to have conviction to size in. Okay, sure, you could have sized in at 160, but who the fuck knew, right? So I'm playing it super safe. These are the 20 blackjack. Trading is actually reverse, the reverse of logic. Logic says this stock is down so much, it, you should buy it. It was two dollars. Why am I? Why the fuck are you shorting at one forty? Why are you shorting the stock at one forty when the stock was at two dollars? So that is the beginning, beginner's way of trading, and that's the way that everybody was taught to trade through CB, uh, CNBC. Value investing. Keep fucking adding. If you liked it at two dollars, you would love it at one forty. Okay, that's the wrong way to do. It. CNBC teaches you to do value investing to keep adding to your fucking position because they're fucking they're trading real companies and they're they're fucking these guys are holding this shit for years right so that but we're day trading dude and we're day trading these stocks that are a fucking turds pieces of shit that need to dilute to in order to pay their employees right and so if you want a blackjack hand that is a death line <clears throat> so you can make <clears throat> a strategy just completely around the death line guys if you are under pattern day trader, but you have locates, just wait for the fucking deadline. Get in that fucking shit. You fucking hold it. That's it. You set up a stop where the next line is broken. So you, I always do line to line. And so when the next line is broken, you can stop out. But it's a 20 hand, guys. Just because something is a 20 blackjack hand doesn't mean that you can uh, still not lose. Remember, you can still be beat by 21. But it's a very rare thing, man. Very rare that these things get saved underneath the deadline unless it's a, a nano float and there's an algo on there that's fucking trapping people and there's huge volume demand okay it was like a one million float two million float where some guy owns fucking five hundred thousand shares can fucking easily squeeze this shit up but it's rare it's like it's like it's like a one in ten chance that's gonna happen just like tw blackjack it's very rare that the dealer's gonna have blackjack when you have 20 okay but you can still push. Remember, you can still push. They can save it back to your spot. And that's when you stop out. And when you stop out, that's pushing. Okay? So think about that. So I told the guys in the room, 140 was the death line. Okay? I shorted it all the way down. That's because I'm recycling shares. But if you want to play really safe, when it breaches 140, boom, you slam that shit. And you fucking hold it. And then you set a stop. And maybe a 144. Okay? And basically, that's break even. So that's you having a 20 blackjack hand and then if it if you stop at 144 that means a dealer has a 20 hand so all you're paying is for commission four cents is nothing right so now what's at codx site guys give me a quote on codx i'm not even talking about two dollars i i swear this shit all the way to two bucks but that's because uh that's a little more advanced and i don't recommend that but and but that's but that's later on right you build your tool chest so that you start with the easy setups so now I'm trading a bunch of different setups. But uh, 127, oh shit, it's coming back up, huh? But I'm still good, 140 is the line. You know what I'm saying? So what it's gonna do, it's gonna clean out some people here and then it's gonna stair stop down. And that's the hope. I'm hoping it goes back down to $1 and that's gonna cover. So it'll be a nice fucking payday on, on the new entries at 140 line. But you see how that works, guys? So within all these trading strategies, there's different lines. And the best line for a short is the death line. Okay, people make fun of this death line shit. They can call it what they want. But the, the trick is this, guys. There's an, uh, trading begins with an observation. Observations are based upon what you see. And as a human, you don't really don't fucking see these observations unless you, you make a lot of money through them repetitively or you lose a lot of money through them repetitively. So I've lost enough fucking money uh, when I started out to, to realize that, hey man, when a major support breaks, you should not be long. It's reverse from, from logic. In logic, it's like, oh, it's cheap. I gotta buy it. No, dude. In the stock market, strong stocks get stronger. 
Weak stocks get weaker. You do not ever want to buy a fucking piece of shit stock, a small cap turd on sale. It's on sale for a reason, okay? You want to buy stocks. If you want to go long, you buy stocks making new highs, strong stocks, not weak ass stocks. If it starts to slowly walk down, get the fuck out, dude. And the death line is a point of no return. <coughs> if you're holding it long position and the death line gets breached, you need to get the fuck out and stop trying to add this thing. You will lose all your fucking money. Okay, so these, these things will get sold down to like nothing, dude. It, sometimes it doesn't fucking even bounce. So you have to be very smart. So that is the death line. Death line, in my opinion, is a 20 blackjack hand. Uh, so, you know, that's so... We, we, we really didn't talk much about the death line on IG Live yet. Because, uh, but now you understand, okay? We teach all this stuff. And uh, that's uh, thanks to whoever is watching because you guys <laughs> learned a great new strategy today. Death line, guys. Um, what else were we talking about? Okay, uh, let's take a viewer question. Today wasn't planned. I I wanted to do a walk because I'm like, shit, dude. I'm not going to sit there all day after zombie hours. So I have my brutals, my process, right? And uh, Alex, let's get the fuck out. So I got <laughs> Alex is my tab. He's like, get the fuck out. So I got the fuck out. <laughs> uh, let's see who wants to get on, guys. Mike, I'm just gonna randomly pull people on. Let me see what's going on. Raise your hand if you guys want to get on and get your questions asked. So the reason I, I got Mike trading on because he asked a question. So, and I got declined, but it's okay. Probably a lot of people at work. Oh look, guys, I found lunch. These turkeys, these like wild turkeys, is rolling around, man. It's crazy. So once you get on, guys. Diego. Let's go on with Diego. Decline. Story of my life. Everybody is swiping left. No one wants to match with me on the <laughs> Finn Twitter. Um, Tinder here. Trinder. No problem, man. I know everyone's working. Who wants to get on? Who wants to get on? Let me see. Yeah. The old, one, one thing about the, the year event. Live trading. This is stuff we teach that you can do. It's not advanced stuff. Teach you to scalp. Teach you the lines. I mean, this is, this is shit that you would pay a shitload for. But we're giving it free for members, so make sure you you attend the event. All right, let's uh, TD Drifts. I can't get on there. It says pick me. Okay, Matt Morrow. Weird. Can you? For some reason, I can't get on to you guys. Um, do a request or something, guys. Let me see if I can do it. Because when I click on this, it says uh, it doesn't give me the option. You too, TD Drifts. So try to do a request. Raise your hand or something. Request to be, because I can't, maybe you're using a Samsung? Who knows? I, I don't know how this stuff works. Uh, there's some guys that can get on the video and some guys that don't. Because I'm trying to get you on TD Drifts and Matt Morrow, but it does not let me give you the option. So you're going to have to do all your stuff. Here we go. Go live. Matt Morrow. Hey, Fernando, my man, waiting for Matt Morrow. Oh, it's connecting. Hey, Matt, what's up, brother? Hey, how you doing? Hey, tell everybody who you are and all that good stuff, man. Where are you good from? Good to talk and... to you. Yeah, man. Um, I was on here before, like a couple weeks ago or something, talking to Alex. Oh, without the beard? My... I didn't remember the beard. Were you, you had a beard like then? Yeah, yeah, to be here back then. Yeah, maybe it's bigger now, though. I'm just like... You're trying to look like uh, uh, the warrior trading guy. <laughs> yeah, farmer, man. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I feel like as soon as I come on, everyone's going to be like, farmer. Farmer, farmer. Yeah, hey, Ellie, so, what's up? So, so let everybody know yeah. who you are and all that good stuff. Where you from? Is... Yeah, my name's Matt. I'm from Canada. Um, I'm Moro in the chat. Um, M-O-R-O. -O. Where in uh, Canada, brother? 
I'm from Vancouver, but I also lived in Montreal. I, also, I lived in the States a long time, too. I lived in New York City and oh, kind of everywhere. Yeah. All over the place, though. So. Something's <laughs> going. 2.0. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I know. So how's training going, man? So, tell weird. us what you're doing and all that good stuff. Dude, it's killer. It's like ever since I joined a couple months ago, um, this, the, what you teach, I've watched the videos like a hundred times. I just went hard like for a couple months and watched everything. And uh, it's amazing, man. Like I, I'm, it's already, I'm already getting crazy results. Like today was killer. I, I don't know. I just. What did you trade yeah, today, man? I, I, I had a pro super profitable day and that's what did you, amazing. What did you trade? What did you trade? Walk us um, through I the trade, trade and the mindset. COD Walk through the process. CODX right out of the right out of the as soon as market opened, um, just start, as soon as it started spiking, shorted it twice. Sweet. And where where like where perfect. did you short? Where did you short? It was like one. It was I was a little early. I was a little early, but it was like one eighty five. Okay, you're trying yeah. for the two dollar line. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I was one eighty five, and then I and then I scaled up one to like one ninety or something like that, and then okay. And it, it had like a bit of a spike in the open, but then it was just, it, I ex expected that. So it was like, it was basically perfect. Dude, that's yeah. pretty fucking awesome. Especially what's <laughs> that now? What, 125? What is it at? 120 something? Yeah, what Holy is it shit. at actually? I gotta, I don't know what it's at right now. I'm not on my computer, but I'm so, still in short. So walk, that's sick. You're still in, see? So walk yeah. us through the process, man. Walk through the, uh, educate these guys on what you learn and then how you apply the process to this trade. Yeah, it was just I, I uh, the movement, the the spike in the stock was for me. This, this is something that Aloha Trader m mentioned too that I kind of liked. He said like when um, there's a, there's a really unhealthy movement. I mean, it was up for nothing. I mean, anyone could look and be like it was whatever PR and yep. you know. So the news wasn't that important. It didn't really the it did, the 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 amount it spiked didn't really justify. You know, wasn't justified. Okay, and so. I knew it was basically a short. I checked, just like what you say, I checked the history and it went yep. up to like basically its previous level. I can't remember. Two, so two bucks, two something, two ten line. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like based on the history, based on the line, totally perfect. Yep. And then I didn't, I didn't, I didn't start shorting it early, too early, but like, yep. Um, you, you let it go. You let it go to the line. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I figured there would be some excitement maybe from longs in the open that would be like oh maybe this is you know i was ready to stop out if it went up i didn't expect it to but i thought you know maybe people yep. are gonna some yep. longs are yep. gonna think you know yep buy it at the open so so, so the uh, so the key thing is this this is a little pro tip that you already know but the other yeah. guys uh that are not in my team may not know so we actually look up the history and uh i posted a chart from the last time it ran yeah so so that was a big indicator yeah, the stocks like to do the same thing over and over, right? Yeah. The last time, if you take a look at the the last time it ran, I pulled up the intraday intraday chart. I posted the room. It's pretty dead on the line, dude. Like a two dollars. Yeah, man. The lines work perfectly. Like I've been playing resistance and support. I playing long and short, buying at support, selling yep. at resistance. Perfect, and it's brother. It's consistent as hell. Like it's, it's. If you if you wait and have no FOMO, right? <laughs> yeah. No. I yeah. I had some shitty entries. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like FOMO entries, I've had many, but you know this. That's like, crazy though. But it's like we know, man. When we get it, we we fucking already slap ourselves. Like we know we fucked up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll I've got in too early, bought the sold the bottom and bought the top top and shit. Um, but like, but you, but I'm glad I found you guys because I basically just started and like that's like what you were saying about the foundation of the house or whatever is like yeah. so true. Like. I couldn't imagine starting any other way. Like I go back to some other people's videos and stuff and they're like, EMA crossing the line or whatever, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, just, oh, man. You know, yeah, just, but even just practically, how, like if, how, how much screen time would you need to see these situations? Like, I don't know. It's just, it just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't like make sense. Whereas your system is proved like a hundred times a day. Yeah. Every stock, it's like so, bam, bam, bam. so. This is the yeah. thing. There's different. I mean, I'm not bashing moving averages. That, that it works. I mean, it works. That's why people are using them. But you have to yeah. consider the context in which those moving averages are being used. They're from swing traders. We are day yeah. traders. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So a lot yeah. of people don't understand that. Hey, man, if you're applying the wrong indicator, 
to your strategy, but your strategy is a day trading strategy. It may not work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. so you have to apply the right one. And another, another thing I saw on CODX, okay? So there's two tips for CODX. So, of course, this is furu. <laughs> it's like hindsight. I mean, this is a guru, a huru shit. Hindsight guru. All talk, right? Because we, we made money and it works. So all the stuff we're talking about is huru. So, so one huru thing is it's the same chart as the last time we ran. Two dollars. Okay? Uh, the second one is CODX was very hard to borrow. It's like, fuck, dude. I, I, I managed to only get 10,000 shares. Okay? <laughs> Across all my brokers. Couldn't get any more. But ten thousand shares will still make you some decent money. But so the fact that I knew it was very hard to borrow, meaning in order for a stock to get squeezed up to ten dollars, they need to trap a ton of shorts. If there is no short supply, who is there to trap except the long? So it becomes an overcrowded trade on the long side. Everybody is thinking this shit is going to five bucks. But but there's no one trapped. And so everybody's long, and so the first dump it comes is a waterfall. It makes sense. So I always take a look at the supply of shorts. If it's easy to borrow, this stuff could have gone up to like three bucks. But the fact is, I couldn't get shares. No one can get shares. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to get more shares, and I couldn't. So those are the couple of things I look at, guy. Um, availability of the shorts to see who's getting squeezed. If there's no one to squeeze, how can it go up, right? And so, and the and the line to line method, the death line. So when you saw a breach death line, you must be so happy, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I I just like put all my size in like right away and was like, I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. It takes you know what, man. In the beginning, it's very scary. When yeah. you're slamming, when you're slamming shit at 440, when it, it was at two bucks. Yeah. But, yeah. but but over time, this is this is what happens. Trading in the beginning is very fearful, but you have to keep doing it. And trust, you know, trust comes after repetition. Yeah. yeah. And so the guys that are scared. What you do is just go small size until you have that trust. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. I mentioned it a couple times in the chat, but I was doing just 100 shares, 100 or 200 shares. And just doing that over and over and over again, like all day, trying different things and trying and trying. Yep. I did that for like a month. And then today was like the first day I came back with size. And it was like, bam, I just was super confident about what, what I was doing. And it was just total, I, I won on basically every trade. I don't know. It was, That's awesome. That's awesome, man. It was amazing. So, yeah, it was, it was just like practicing, the, practicing what you teach, you know. It's like you need to do it with, you need to let the stock go against you. You know, yeah. you need to you need to see all these things happen. Before I would just stop out. The stock would go against me one cent. I would stop out. Yeah. And, you know, so this, so this is what I learned in right. Nasdaq. You're, you're right. You, in Nasdaq, the moment you enter anything, you're down. <laughs> you, yeah. You have to be. You have to be comfortable with being down and letting your plan work. And so, if you're uncomfortable yeah. and you're stopping out all the time, it means your size yeah. is too big. Okay. Yeah. Your size is too big. So you, what you can do is a couple things. You do. You can either max size. Tiny ass stop, or smaller size, wider stop. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's, that's so that. Yeah, you have to because sometimes your idea is right, but you you your entry is wrong. You know, so you need to let it play out, and you need yep. to have the experience. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I I always talk about painting the picture, right? So you have the overall picture of what the stock is going to do, and then and then you have to execute. So just because you know that the stock is going down doesn't mean you should enter right away. So the combination of painting the picture and getting the right entries, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why trading's yeah. so hard. <laughs> you have to get all these things right. Those, and the moment yeah. you're, <laughs> and the moment you're down four cents, you're like, "Fuck, I'm down a couple hundred bucks." Or yeah. you're like, you get freaked out, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's and, not. It's it's too much pain. I think in the beginning, I don't think people should do it. Like. And I think you should just acknowledge the fact you don't know anything yet. You know, you got to like learn, don't learn the hard way. Like, yeah, I always yeah. tell people like, why, why are you throwing money away when you don't really know what you're doing? So the way you did it is correct, man. You know, you, you try it and it's like, be patient, learn it, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you don't just enter the NFL. You have to go through the Wee league, junior high, high school, college. So, yeah. You know, yeah. That's, Exactly. I know. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you need to, you, yeah, you, 
it's stressful, you know, in the beginning, it's so stressful. You're like, fuck, I just lost like 300 bucks or something, you know, and it's like, that's all you have. <laughs> so, so tell, tell people like your, how you started really quickly so that the new guys are starting because you say you joined it just a few months ago. So you relatively yeah. new, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so give us a quick timeline on when you started and what you found to be, you know, how you got here, man, because it seems like you know what you're doing now. It, it's only been a few months. <laughs> no, I've been I've been studying for six months before. I just was at MIC for for um, uh, two two or three months. But okay. before that, I was like in other chat rooms, and I was just I was just looking through the internet, and I was like, you know, I wanted to learn how to trade, and I was like, there is enough information here online for me to learn this, so I'm just going to go through everything. And I just sort of took a really methodical approach. Like I was like no bias on any information. I'll listen to anyone. I'll look at anyone. I'll try to understand what, where they're coming from. And, right. you know, and I, so, did, I even, so you're a year process. It's been a year, right? Around a year. Uh, about, no, I, about seven, seven or eight months. Yeah. Maybe all together. You, you are, you're yes. well ahead of the norm. <laughs> yeah. And I joined one, you know, in the beginning, I joined one like alert group, like the sites alert group. Uh -huh. And like, he was like, okay, buy, price target $2. And then, like, a minute later, I sold at 150 and you're still holding it? It was literally one trade, one trade. And I was like, cancel, like, right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're, you're lucky that um, you, you, you learn quick without losing all your money. Uh, that's why I always said, do not chase It's crazy, learn. man. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. But in the beginning, you think, yeah, you know, oh, it's going to be easy money. It's going to be easy. Yep. Like, I'm just going to be able to sign up to a website, plug in my bank account, and I'm going to double it. <laughs> so, so that's good. And so you went through the normal process that people go through. You, you lost yeah. some, but you're smart enough to realize that this is not the right way. And so... Yeah. So, I, don't think, I, don't think any, go I don't think anyone should take a big risk in the beginning. Like, you got to... It's not worth it. It's the longevity. You're, you're sacrificing your longevity, you know. It's got to be... So you, you started a, long? So tell, tell us how you got from long to short. Or oh, you should yeah. both, I right? Started long. Both. Yeah. yeah. I started long in the beginning because it was just like, oh, yeah, you just look for news and you look for a company that's real and you just, you know, you see their stock is down and you buy it. And so, you know, it's, you think it's going to go up or whatever. And you, you're sort of, it's, 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 it's like exactly what you were saying earlier, you know, like the CNN thing. It's like the most basic understanding of the stock market. Like, I'm going to buy keep Apple. Buying. <laughs> When it's five dollars, you know, and you know that's Keep adding. insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, and then so as I was watching charts and just watching the stock market, I was like, you know, shorting is like, and actually, because some people like when they first come in, they think shorting has this like negative connotation, like you're trying to kill the company or something, you know? Yeah. But then I saw, but then I just. You know, once you learn about stocks, you realize that they're trying to kind of take your money by pumping it up. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> and shorting is kind of like the response. Like, no, you can't. Yep, yep. Anyway. Yeah, but <laughs> um, but it's it's like with shorting, it's much more dangerous. So I think you got to be more, you know, it's good that people start out long. But like, because shorting, yeah, shorting is more dangerous. Um, but you can see the pattern, you know, like you can see it set up so much easier than a long. A long is like, what, what, what is going to happen? Like, I have no idea. But yeah, it's, uh, but to get, become a good short, so you understood the long side that, and you understood yeah, the yeah. pump and dump side. Yeah. So that's, you know, you don't just start shorting and fucking getting killed. You, uh, you understood why these stocks squeeze the way they do. So that's the beauty yeah. of it. I really learned long in MIC because of just your support lines. You're like, this is support, this is support, this is support. And so I was just buying on those lines, you know, and that works. Yeah, the first so, bounce stuff, man, I guess it worked. <laughs> yeah, 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 that really works. And then awesome. now I know my covers and, you know, it's, wow. yeah, it's perfect. This is, uh, so you're, you're like the model, man. I mean, one year into this <laughs> and now you're, you, you are feeling comfortable, you know, so. Totally. But just remember, but but just remember, I keep telling these, I keep telling everybody this: rich management. What's going to happen is this: you're going to become so comfortable that you're going to start breaking rules. You're going to have FOMO. Yeah. You're going to let these stocks slide when you know you should stop out. Because why? Yeah. You made money twenty days in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so yeah, I, I, know. I hate, I hate people to lose their money on the one red day that they fucking get hit. 
So you yeah. have to stop out. The reason we are yeah. still trading, what's the ODX at right now? Yeah, another thing, what? another thing I think might help, another thing I might help new people um, is when you're trading small, don't go for, you know, it's, like, it's the same thing with a home run or whatever when you're trading big, but go for 10%. 10% of your, that's a win, you know? So like if you're trading a hundred bucks, 10 bucks, cut the, you're, you won, you know? So, cause. So, well, well, have you gotten a call with Tosh? No, actually, no. You, you got, you got to get on that. Cause Tosh's style is very great. So what he does okay. is like, let's say, so he takes a piece off. So when it hits, so when it dumps, right? Yeah. He'll take a piece off and then he'll hold the, the last piece, like half of it. Yeah. And put a stop out. So now he's getting it's like a trailing stop loss. So he, yeah. he's locking in for cushion and then letting the rest ride. And then putting a stop, you know, trailing stop so that he'll not lose on the last position. Yeah. So the worst yeah. case he'll do is yeah. he'll make money on the half he took and he'll break even on the last half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's I mean I'm I'm just coming yeah, you guys know you guys know this so well. Like um so, I like the I fact that you know that the point is not to be greedy. So you you hit it, you hit it right there, yeah. brother. Not to yeah. be greedy. I just think like yeah, I just think like people when they start out maybe bet a hundred bucks and try to go for ten, and that's a winning trade, you know, because soon it will be oh, I love it, dude. a thousand yeah. and a hundred or ten thousand and a thousand or whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I like to do the line to line. You can have yeah. however, however you want to do. So, but the point yeah. is, you have to start taking somebody off the table just to pay yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because that's going to happen. It's going to cushion you for the last hold. That's awesome, yeah. man. Are you coming Thanks. to Philly? I can. I'm in Asia, so I would love to. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're yeah, in Thailand, right? To. What's that? Are you in Thailand? Yeah, Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah I remember that. It's starting, to come, it's starting to come back now. Yeah, yeah. Meet up in Thailand. That would be sick. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, soon. <laughs> Next time, I'll let you know for sure. Yeah. Thank you, man. Right, man. I just want to say thanks, too. Like, this has been life-changing. I just fucking love it. So I just want to say thanks. Like, Dude, I'm really telling you, now you're living the dream. You, you, know, <laughs> you don't need to make much money trading. Now you can fucking live in Thailand. Yeah, it's, it's, it's small time, but, it, you know, I'm building up. So, yeah, it's pretty small time. It's pretty small time. time is relative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. for totally. Thailand, you, $100 a day in Thailand, you're rich. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you, man. Thanks. Wow, that was fucking awesome. So Matt lives in Thailand and is making his dreams come true, man. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but trade from anywhere. And if you're living in uh you don't have to fucking trade all day. The reason he stuck around is because CODX breached the death line. So why not? When it breaches the death line, fucking hold it. Set your stop out. So that when he reclaims that, he can stop out. So what's that, 125? I'm hoping it drops another level where I can start taking some off. I've been walking for the past hour, so I actually have not taken it off. It's forcing me to hold. <laughs> I have blind covers out though. So if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to end it. But if, if another person wants to get on, let me know. Do a request, and I'll put you on. Remember, you don't have to be MIC. I'll field anybody's questions. So as you see, guys, the, the process works because we, we started with a strategy based upon experience. And then we built a process around the strategy. You can have your own strategy yourself. Okay, and then, but the key is every strategy, if you want to, if it becomes a proven strategy, it's something you can do over and over. Okay, and so to, in order to to take advantage of your strategy, you need to be able to build a process on it. So I always think of that order. You can experiment, and then you find something that works, you take advantage of it. If you cannot quantify it via a strategy, Via, via process, that is not a consistent process. I mean, it's consistent strategy. Whew. I guess that's it, huh, guys? We talked about the death line. And as you see, man, Matt is living in Thailand uh, one year into trading. 
At first, it's overwhelming. Don't be afraid to lose. But Matt was very smart. He was only training 100 shares. That's his tuition. Very smart, man. A lot of guys think they come in and be rich overnight. Sure, you can get lucky and become rich overnight. But you would lose it back over time. So I don't want you guys to do that. We, I want to teach you to trade and be self-sufficient for the rest of your life. Not to chase alert and make money on one trade and then lose money on the next night. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you online.